Hello, welcome to another McCullough screencast. Sorry for the delay tonight. We had an after school enrichment class in our room. Um, today we're going to do some work with parallelograms and we are going to find the area of parallelograms and rectangles today. Um, before we even begin, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think about a couple things. Um, and I want you to do that on our class uh, document that I shared with you that's called uh, Unit 4 questions. So the document looks like this right here. Um, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom you will see in bright green area of parallelogram. So what I'd like you to do is record your thoughts and answer some of these questions if you can. Um, if you get to the bottom here if you just hit enter it will add another row into the box. So answer the questions in the box uh, please do it in uh, a dark colored font so that we can read it easily. Um, and there's four questions. So there's one, two, three, four. See how this one kind of went on to the next page? We can uh, put it down onto the next page, but sometimes it might just disappear. So we got to make sure we pay attention. There's four questions. And let's go over these questions really fast before I have you pause the video. So the four questions are, what does the word area mean? What is the difference between area and perimeter? How do people measure area? And how do they measure perimeter? Why don't you go ahead and pause the video now, fill in those uh, text boxes on our Google document, and then come on back. Hello and welcome back. All right, as I said, we're going to be learning a little bit about um, finding area of parallelograms. And if we remember that area is um, area is the uh, let's pull up the pen here. Sorry, I had to find my pen. Area is a measurement that is measured in squares. And we know from our prior studies on area that area uh, that this area here represents one square unit. Okay? And we know that when we measure area, we measure the number of squares inside of a shape. So for example, if we had our shape here, we would measure the number of square units inside the shape by seeing how many squares were inside of the shape. We would have one square unit, two square units, three square units, four square units. We already know that. So we don't have to practice doing that anymore. We also know, and I'm just going to put a little note here that this is area. And we know that perimeter is measured by finding the number of linear units all the way around the shape. So in this case, the perimeter of this shape is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just units. Okay, so it's just a quick review on what area is. Today what we're going to practice doing is we're going to practice finding the area of parallelograms. And what is a parallelogram? Well, you know that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So, let's go make it. So there is an example of a parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides. Okay. And you may not have known, but a square and a rectangle are also parallelograms because they both also have two sets of parallel lines. Let's say with our square. Okay. So a square is a parallelogram. A rhombus is a parallelogram. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to work on finding the area of parallelogram. So, if we take a look at an area of a parallelogram, if I just make a parallelogram right here, we can see that, oh, hold on, let me start over here. We 
can see that this parallelogram. I'm going to start over again because that's a bad example. It's kind of a small grid. Um, I'm going to make a parallelogram right here, just like that. Okay. We can see that a parallelogram, and if we're finding the area of this parallelogram, we can find inside of our shape that we can make some of our square units. So right now we see two square units in this shape. Okay, well how do we find the area of the rest of the parallelogram? Because as you can see, there's only parts of this square unit field and only parts of this square unit field in right here. So we only have parts of the square unit. Same on this side, we only have parts of each square unit. Well to find the, the area of a parallelogram it's actually pretty simple. You take this triangle right here and you imagine that it slides over to this point and it actually looks like that. So we can now find the area of this parallelogram because we just slid this triangle right here all the way across our parallelogram to the other side and it actually fills in the other side of that triangle right there. You can see that this triangle right here and this triangle right here are congruent triangles and they're exactly the same. When we, when we find the area then we're going to ignore this triangle and we're going to see the area inside of these two triangles right here. And we can see that we have one, two, three, four square units. So this original parallelogram that we had that looked like this, we found that the area in that parallelogram is four square units because we took this triangle and moved it to this side, drew it there, and we can now see that we created another two square units on that side. Okay? Let's look at one more before we talk a little bit about a little more a little bit more about some other uh, polygons. Okay, let's try a little bit bigger one, and I'm going to um, let me go all the way up here. I'm going to go all the way up here. I'm going to draw my line and make my parallelogram. Okay, I start by looking at the inside of my parallelogram. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to take this point on this corner and go straight down. And now you can see that I can count my square units inside of this parallelogram. Okay, so you can see now that I have one, two, three, four, five, six parallelograms inside of my shape and if I take this triangle here and I slide it to the other side, you can see that that triangle fills in on the other side of the shape. So we can add some more square units to our parallelogram. Seven, eight, and nine. So again, when we measure parallelograms, whether they be big or small, we take our points that have the obtuse angles and we make a line going straight up and down. We take our other point that has the obtuse angle and we make it going straight down. We count our square units on the inside and we slide our triangle to the other side and we count our last couple square units. Okay, so that's how you measure or find the area of a parallelogram. Now we already know um, tom in tomorrow's lesson, you're also going to have some shapes. You're going to have to find the area of some other random shapes. And we know that if we draw a shape, okay, it doesn't matter what the shape is, that we can find the area of that shape by counting the number of squares inside of that shape. So I start by filling in my squares in that shape. Then I can count them. I like to draw on my shape because it's easier. So remember how many I've counted and I don't miss any. So right now you see that I have eight square units and I have one half of a square unit. So I have eight and one half square 
units. Okay? Just remember to count these halves. If we have a shape that has two halves, let's say like this, okay, we know that we can fill in our shape with square units. We can count them. Then we have 10, we have a half here, we have a half here, and we know that if we put these two halves together, it makes a whole. So we now have 11 square units. Okay? So that is how we measure the area of parallelograms. Okay? You take a look at our parallelograms, we draw that line straight up here. We draw the line straight down there. We count the square units inside of that shape. And then we take our triangles and we slide it to the other side. Because there are two congruent triangles and we can do that. Okay? So, hopefully you are able to find the area and perimeter of rectangles mostly and then also of these parallelograms. So, thank you for watching. And until the next time. Sorry, wrong button.